Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents The Titan's Gift Seasons 2 Episode 17. I'm your demon host Marty joined by the full Seattle crew. Let me just get Gene's uh, face in here and then let me make your mics hot like tamales. All right. Hot mics, hot mics. How's everyone doing on this fine uh, on this fine spring evening? Glorious. Yeah. Doing well. Sitting at home, you know, um, not being outside. <laughs> As is tradition. Yes. <laughs> it's dangerous out there, man. You might fail your fort. Your fort save. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> it's also not related to coronavirus. <laughs> Just don't like it out there. Seriously, all that sun, people. <laughs> well, my evening just took a little bit of a tank. It turns out they delivered my dinner, our dinner order, in the wrong place. Oh uh, no! <laughs> so now we have to sort that. <laughs> oh. Reorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, refund. Reorder. <laughs> oh no. How are you doing, Marty? Not too bad. Uh, I got some sun this weekend. Um, I was feeling sick like last Monday. I recovered by around Friday-ish. I uh, got some sun. Uh, I've gone outside a couple times and, you know, sat on the roof. Uh, not today, but yesterday and Friday. I managed to get out there for like an hour. Um, just That's good. Apparently no one likes the roof at my building. It's beautiful. It's got a nice view of the, of the sound and, yeah. yeah it's nice that it's open. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because, yeah. like, in my building, they shut down everything, including the roof. Same. Yeah. So go out there. Uh, go out there with good. a cup. Go out there with a couple beers and a bottle of hand sanitizer, and you know, just soak up some rays. So that's that's what I did a couple times. Uh, we also finished game fifty, which would be the last game of. Um, uh, thanks for the thanks for the resub, Matt. Ooh. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Um, you, you said that as I clicked the button, I was like, you can't be talking to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so game 50 of our Pathfinder 2 game uh, is on Saturday. It should be the last game of that campaign. It has been a, uh, a really weird and wonderful ride. We enjoy the system, but we are so excited to get back to uh, Pathfinder 1 with that crew. Uh, so much so that we turned the adventure bot generator into a side campaign with me, Ahmed, and Adam, whereby we are sharing the DM stick. We're generating the, the adventure via the bot, and then uh, we each take turns fleshing out what that means for the characters and, and being the DM in that campaign. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, and one of the things that we're doing in that campaign as well is we're playtesting the three action action economy brought from second edition back into first edition. Uh, they did this, they did this test or they did this rule set as part of like one of the last books they put out in first edition called Unchained, Pathfinder Unchained. It's called the Unchained Action Economy. Well, looking back at it after playing second E, this was their like plan for how they do actions in, uh, in second E. Why we like it is that every, it basically think of a round where you have three actions around. You know, in first E, you walk up to the door and you open the door and your your action's done. Like, you, it's next turn. Well, in, 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 in 2E, you walk up to the door, you open the door, and you can still attack or cast a really quick spell. Yeah. And so, so there's a little bit, it crams a little bit more into what you can do in a round. And if everyone gets to do that, then, then no big deal. Um, it, it, it seems to work. Uh, so we're play testing that right now. There may be a point where I go, Hey guys, you want to check this out for this campaign? Um, and basically it's a table of like the old action type and the new action type and you map it over and it's, uh, it's pretty simple, but we'll, we'll go through, we'll go through at least like 20 games before, uh, before torturing you guys with that. I love, I love that. I love Pathfinder needs to make it more complicated in order to make it more simple. <laughs> uh, it, it's like we need to add some complexity to make the turns a little more fun. Yeah. I can see that. Yep. 
it felt really bad when teaching Blake how to play, where he spent a round a couple of times walking up to a door, opening it, and then his turn was done. Yeah. Like, that fe it felt really, really shitty uh, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, how about you guys? What have you guys been up to? Uh, water and plants. I got uh, quite the, the pile of plants accumulating. I'm going to try and keep them all alive since I never leave my apartment. I have a lot of time to take care of them. So. Yep. Got that. And playing a ton of Mordheim City of the Damned, which is a delightful little squad-based turn uh, tactical RPG. Kind of like XCOM, but uh, Warhammer, not 40k Warhammer. What the snap is that? Uh, it came out in like 2013. It does kind of take on... There's like XCOM sort of top-down squad games. Uh, this one, you do like third-person camera. So it's kind of fun to run the guys around rather than just like click hexes, you know. I saw you playing that on Sunday night. I think it was on Sunday night, and I was like, "What the heck is he playing?" Because I, I was working, and my Steam list showed all of the people that I know, and they were, and they were all busy playing some game, <laughs> some play, you know, Half Life, and some people were playing, you know, whatever. And, and uh, I, I'm, all the names I knew, and then I, and then I saw what you were playing. I'm like, what in the hell is that? And I went and I googled it and I looked at the screenshots and I thought, hmm. <laughs> it looks very Luke. It's a fun game. I like it. I like being in <laughs> Matt, what's going on with you? Yeah, man, not much. Uh, I've been getting a little bit better at uh, at my job, uh, uh, which involves writing a lot of C plus plus. Um, and so I'm 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 learning some of the tips and tricks there, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean. Avoiding memory leaks. Am I? I, I hope so. <laughs> um, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I've been playing some Civ Six uh, uh, co-op with my wife. Um, ooh, nice. Finished a couple games of Stellaris. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just a lot more cooking, you know. Cooking. Uh, yeah, I made a. Um... A Guinness beef stew on Sunday, and it, nice. it's it's been the highlight of the week. Nice. Beef stew for lunch. Yep. That's nice. I've made Guinness beef stew before, um, and I've decided it was actually better with IPAs. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll have to check. It's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, we'll make it with something different next time. Uh, there are some recipes then, out there that call for like uh, 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 vinegar and red wine, but yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, the I mean, vinegar probably makes sense in any beer base too, right? Don't know about wine. Well, maybe. Um, wine stews I've had less less luck with them. And beer based for sure. No, this um, this one's been super tasty. Uh, for a first attempt, it was definitely good. That sounds awesome. Yep. Uh, to be fair, I don't think there's many things that doesn't go with beer. At this point, just thinking about beer that's not in my house is incredible. Beer in my house is good too, but if like, <laughs> thinking about going out and drinking a beer with you guys, man. I'm, that yep. Be next level, right? Now. Yep. 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 Consider the like surgery, driving, right? Like <laughs> maybe piloting an airplane. Um, I mean, there are things that don't go with beer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Okay, There's a lot got of it. Pilots. It's surgeons might disagree with other people. <laughs> that sounds like a you problem, not like yep. a me problem. Yep. Wow. For innocent bystanders, it's not great. <laughs> yeah. I drink a beer while flying in a plane all the time. It's oh. Well, I, I did think piloting, yeah, but yeah. Yes. Um, you you were sufficiently sure. specific. <laughs> Actually, I was. I did say piloting. But yeah, um, listen, um, alcohol is great. I've um, been drinking a lot of it. I opened my saddle, a second bottle of vodka in a week. That's great. Um, but dude, we got so much wine delivered today. Restock the wine fridge. I think I most miss like a nice craft cocktail at a bar, though. It's like you can make them at home, but like you do it, bartender. 
Yeah, and I, I'm decent at it, but not amazing. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a couple of good ones though lately. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just to be sure. You, you've shared a couple of pictures that that's pretty good. I just want a pint of Manny's. <laughs> yeah. And a TV <laughs> with hockey on it. Yeah, a TV with hockey on it. Yep. <laughs> Well, a TV with anything but coronavirus on it. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Like, like, I don't think people who don't... Like, all of the local ads on TV, everybody has jumped on the bandwagon. Like, everybody's going, you know, I am a lawyer, and I know this is a tough time due to COVID-19. Why do you need to tell me that? I know that. <laughs> it's topical, dude. It's crazy. To be fair, if you're... You know, selecting an attorney based on a TV ad, you do <laughs> need to be told things like that. That's true. That's, yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. That's my point. Like, hey, we do heating and air, but due to COVID-19, we do a lot of less of it now, but we still do it, so contact us. I do all of my shopping off of TV ads. All right. <laughs> As seen on. As seen on. Uh, all right. <laughs> Do you have any of those collections of your 200 favorite folk laws songs? <laughs> right. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've got... <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's actually going to show us. He's actually going to show so us. So many commemorative <laughs> plates and, and like, knives Ooh. that can cut through everything. Uh, yeah. They really can't, though. Yeah. You have to <laughs> well, they can cut the tension. What was that, Luke? You have to rebuy the dictionary set every year? From yeah. TV? Yeah, encyclopedias and dictionaries just every Ooh, one. And, I and, man, and... I remember World Book uh, and Dictionary. <laughs> When those were physical objects. Yep. And then CDs. CDs. <laughs> well, how am I ever gonna? House, man. Yeah. <laughs> how am I ever gonna like make this collection myself? <laughs> so my, 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 my wife. My wife got, received a gift from somebody. Um, it wasn't a gift. It was just a. We don't want it, so we're, we'll give it away to anybody who wants it. So it was an encyclopedia set. And um, we, we were surprised, like, why would somebody give this away? I won't say what the set was and so on, but it was just a general encyclopedia set from a specific year. And we brought it home and we were browsing through it and like, ooh, you can't say this anymore. Ooh, you definitely can't say this anymore. Ooh, this is not politically correct. So no wonder somebody gave it away. I, I, do, I do gotta wonder, like, did you just randomly to open to those pages? Because there's a lot of pages, even old encyclopedias, that would not cause that reaction. So sometimes, sometimes you when you when, when you get something, some like when Marty gets a book, when Marty gets to decide on books, I'm guessing he picks something Dungeons and Dragons related, right? Uh, that that, that first or... bookshelf is non D and D. That one's D and D, and that one's D and D. As in exactly my point. Yeah. So I'm guessing that if yeah. Marty was to get an encyclopedia. And he's bored, and he's like, "Okay, I just got an encyclopedia. Let's see if it's worth its money." He's probably gonna look up D and D. Okay. Right. So uh, it was it was a situation like that. Like looked up things that that, that we know something about. Like, wonder what it says about this. Oh no. <laughs> like right. South Africa, for instance. That would be one. Yeah. I would think that one probably has some controversial entries. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything oh, yeah. geography related, I think. <laughs> Um, or history for that map. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Fox. How's it going? Uh, why don't we do a recap of what happened last game? Uh, last game was on 331. It was called Displaced Beasts. The jerks hop off the train through the cattle gates to avoid the party of guards on the platform. In the bowels of the station itself, they find a duo of Baku Potem thugs harassing some caged beasts. One of the beasts escapes, while the other one is given a free lunch. The party heads into the plague-riddled city of Grand Station. Uh, and that's where we left things uh, there. You'll notice that some of the maps are a bit different. I have cleaned up this particular campaign file uh, to just sort of concentrate on the things in uh, Station, and there are some maps that you guys cannot see quite yet. Um, I'm going to move ourselves to um, uh, to the conversation oh, yeah. layer. As you guys are picking your, your way through, uh, and then I'll whip back to the map for a second. 
here is Grand Station. This this dark gray area is the Plateau District, which is kind of like a very large, um, well, plateau or flat area below which lies the Slough Borough and above which lies other richer neighborhoods. Uh, and you soon go into the palaces that um, uh, that the the sovereignty uh, live live in. There is a secluded valley where uh, some high output agriculture takes place. Uh, you guys are you guys have your Villa Malavala that you've staked out in the Sundown Valley, and then there are some other wilder areas further down uh, in the Pearl itself. Uh, from the Cactus Express, you guys traveled uh, through train tracks, which turned from magical train tracks in the in the ether into actual train tracks on its way to Grand Station. You guys have exited Grand Station at this point in time, and you're going to start heading towards, I believe you said the Temple District, um, uh, to go and visit the um, the holy place of Bampa Damodamba. We must heal Markranom, not a moment to waste. Oh yeah, I don't feel so good. It, it's, things are Things are going wrong in my bellies. Oh no. You still riding on my back, right? Or yep. riding with me? Yep, he's still riding with you. Okay. Are, 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 are you gonna mess all over me? Uh, you me before you do? I'll, I'll try to keep it in. And you hear this like impossible amount of water slurring around in his in his uh, in the sack that is Makarnam. This is not sounding good at all. Oh. You need a rest. Oh, oh! Well, let's be going then uh, to the Temple District to Bombabendum. Okay, <laughs> what route are you taking? Are you going through the uh the district where the Arcanacrum is, and all the magic shops, or are you going through? Um, are you going through the? Uh, Shops and and homes um, where Makarnam's, uh house was. Perhaps we could make haste through the residential neighborhoods if we move there. There might be less traffic. Go quickly. Okay. Yes, it'd be interesting to see what uh, Makarnam's kin have uh, suffered as well. Ooh. If the plague is indeed rampant. Uh, for all who care to ride and can fit, I offer you my carriage. I'll say as I cast a phantasmal carriage. I'll fly above it if you don't mind. I think we need to put uh, Makronum in the carriage. It might be slightly more comfortable than riding on me. Oh, okay. And he, he gets inside the carriage kind of uh, grumbling and, and gurgling as he's going. Ooh, well, um, perhaps I'll ride up front so I can see what's going on. I'll say as I climb into the the. This the is shot. this is the fabulous carriage that is that is driven by the ghostly driver, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the fear could fit inside, right? Yep. Yeah. You take up the you take up a large quantity of room inside, but uh, yeah, one bench is all the fearos, and then two or three people could fit on the bench. You can also ride on the back of it, or or, or hop on the top. The fearos will get it. Okay. Uh, the ride from Grand Station, uh, you do see that several of the streets are um, barricaded off, um, but the barricades seem to be uh, abandoned. Um, it looks like at one point in time they were trying to control traffic to and from Grand Station. They being, you assume, the the, the guard. Um, or, uh, the streets are quite empty. Uh, most most of the the businesses near Grand Station are boarded up, uh, and when you start traveling into the well-to-do neighborhoods uh, near the Temple District as well as the Arcanacrum, a lot of the shops and um, and homes are also boarded up or are simply closed up. In the uh, richer area that you begin to pass through, where uh, the homes have their own like walled compound, they definitely are. Um, under guard and and looks like most of the homes are uninvited uninvitingly closed you actually see some guards patrolling uh patrolling one fence that faces a street like an iron fence they're patrolling on the inside and they they watch your carriage they stop and watch your carriage as it rolls by hello 
Lovely weather. Um, is it actually lovely weather? Uh, the, uh, so, what time of year is it? Good question. Uh, it is, I believe, summer. Still. And let me check the gear and treasure. Where is your journals? There we go. Uh, you jumped aboard the Cactus Express on summer 74, the 74th day of summer. Uh, you spent three days aboard the Cactus Express. Uh, you reached station. So this would be late late summer. Um, the weather is is it's actually quite pleasant and warm. Wonderful day for a carriage ride, isn't it? Yeah, you 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 wave, you wave at these two guards and they just sort of like like they're a little slack jawed as they see the weird spirit horse uh, dragging the the professor through. They don't know who you are. They they. You're not stopping to bother them. They don't really care. Are you navigating? You don't have to to get to the Temple District, but you could go out of your way if you wanted to go down Eldritch Lane. Will it add a lot of time? Uh, at the rate that you guys are going, it, it would add maybe 10 minutes. Do we need to? With a look, we're seldom up here. Uh, quite a peculiar Mark thing. Mom's home is itself a giant mimic. And I'd be curious if it has suffered uh, anything from this uh, from this plague. And that's an elder slain. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay. I didn't actually say this. Um, yeah, Song also doesn't get inside. Uh, right on the roof, I guess. If, okay. Uh, um, kind of avoiding disease carriers. Social distancing and all. All right, uh, you travel down um, the Eldritch Lane and you reach 42 Eldritch Lane. You can see Makarnam, a couple of his uh, potato-like sprout eyes, uh, kind of like outside the window and looking as he's going by. Um, he's much more, you've seen him much more excited. Like normally he would have pulled himself up to the window, but instead he's sort of like moaning on the seat beside, uh, beside Zephyros and he's got two eye stalks that are sort of looking. And uh, you do see that there is a um, a massive tent, like a fumigation tent, that is all around uh, the building of uh, that is at forty two Eldritch Lane. The Ooh. gate that leads up to the building is closed. You don't see any of the gardeners. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's this multicolored, like white and red, uh, almost like a circus tent that is kind of neatly um, covered the entire building. Can we pass? There's a up? there's a sign on the outside that looks like it was recently painted, like as in the last time that you were there, that says "Keep out." Could we pass close enough to detect magic? Uh, from the cart and see if it has the same magical aura as the house itself did, knowing the house was a giant gobbler. So okay. Just... Um, so you're going to lean off the cart as you go by and try to detect the presence of magic? Yeah, I wanted. I, I spent a good amount of time inside the house gobbler detecting it and sort of feeling the... It has like a a defensive spell that grants it a bunch of uh, like crazy things, um, like traps and stuff like that. Yep. So I'm gonna see if the gobbler just got bigger and the gobbler is the the fumigation tent and not a house anymore. Interesting. Okay. So you stop. So you're gonna stop in front of the house. Yeah. Um, just. I'm from the bench. You're gonna try to catch the front door of the, the tent. Uh, hold up a moment. Uh, this just satisfy an old man's curiosity if you would. Yeah, yeah. because you're in control cool. of your own spell, you don't have to convince it to stop. You just tell it to stop, but you know, the professor's kooky. Um, yeah, the driver stops when you said, hold up a moment and it, it, it interpreted that I had to stop. Um, Not so rough next time, driver. The driver 
um, does not mind being uh, berated and just sort of stares forward and is ready is ready to uh, take off again. And uh, the spirit horses that are pulling the scarage um, are obedient and don't make much noise, although they look somewhat spooky. Uh, first round of detect magic, there is the presence of magic. The second round of detect magic, there are one, two, three, four, five, six auras. Oh, okay. This sounds about right. Give me a spellcraft. Spellcraft. First roll of the day, boys. Here we go. We're uh, sitting inside the chariot, so I'm guessing we can't assist. Uh, Ferris is flying around. I think she would see me leaning out. And... I, I'm flying up above it, yes. I, I'm, I, I see what's going on, but uh, I'm just taking a look myself to see if anybody's moving around. Okay. okay. Uh, 24. Okay, so you distinguish uh, a minor abjuration on the gate. Um, let me just double check a spell. There is a divination slash abjuration coming from the bell that you ring. Uh, there is some sort of magic on the lawn that is probably a transmutation effect. That's just coming off the grass and the plants. Mm -hmm. There is one patch of the lawn that is an evocation. Almost like they may have put some sort of trap just randomly on their lawn. It does say keep out. Uh, so that was one, two, three, four. The fifth. Well, apparently there's a fire brigade going by. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a city. It, it, shit happens. Um, <clears throat> the fifth would be a moderate abjuration that is coming from the tent. It's kind of leaking out of the tent. And then a moderate illusion coming from the tent. What do you think, Farisee? I'll, uh, I'll say as I explain it up to her, she's looking about. Well, the, the, the wards leaking out are from the, the goblet itself, I suppose. Um, oh. The illusion of the tent, though, is interesting. Oh! The mailbox! Are they healthy? Oh, the mailbox. I, th I think I recognize it. One of your siblings? Uh, eh, yeah, one of my pod mates. Oh, delightful. Well, wave hello. Fortunately, I think we must get you to hospital soon. Okay, now that you guys are all looking at the mailbox, you do see that Makarnam kind of raises a little pseudopod and makes this weird little gestation with his pseudopod and and that like a little eyeball comes out of the mailbox blinks at Makarnam and then goes back in <laughs> like a gang sign type deal uh, yeah, so, something like that <laughs> if gang signs were thrown with tentacles then yeah <laughs> how um, how far are we from the box uh well you guys have stopped out in the street and there's a there's a gate that is separates you from the actual fumigation tent which is about 40 feet away from the gate you're about three four feet away from the the front gate and there is this mail box thing but is it at the gate or the tent no it's at the gate you, you go okay. up to the mailbox and put something in if you wanted um i don't what i want to do is cast diagnose disease okay so you're going to cast Diagnose Disease nice. on what? The box. Okay. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, I'm going to say there's a 1 in 20 chance that the box has a disease. Nope. You do not get anything off of the box. Um, which since thought... which since growing an eyeball and it going back inside, you can't actually without without having witnessed that and it responded to Mokernum, you you can't tell this box from any old metal mailbox. Nice. Um, I hang off the roof of. Uh... No, hang is a strong word. So I guess 
I like lean over the side of the carriage. Yep. Carriage. Um, and tell Malcolm, like, your body's fine. Just help it. Oh. Okay. I'm glad that you don't feel bad. Oh, let's let's go. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm satisfied. Everyone else good. Not certain whether that was language or if that was Makronom like trying not to be sick. Um, it could have been language. Uh, there's a strange whistle and crackle that comes from the vicinity of the mailbox, like it's talking back. Ooh. Can I do like a linguistics check to see if I recognize it as? Being disease rather, or being language rather than just yeah. Disease. Give me a linguistics check to identify the language. Uh, twenty-eight. Uh, they were speaking Aklo to each other. Aklo. Oh, I gotta write this. Oh. Which, which is the aberrant language of aberrations. How do you spell that? Uh, A K L O. It is a language of things that don't have normal mouths and normal tongues. <laughs> is it possible to learn it with a human tongue? It, it is. You may not be the best speaker of it, but yes. Uh, part of learning a language is learning how to read, understand, and I suppose speak with a certain degree of competency. Well, shall we? Oh, yeah. Everything's okay there, but they... They've sh mm. Oh, I... I think the house is, uh, not receiving any visitors at the moment. Mm. The if house? It, uh, if it eats something that's infected, it might be, uh, uh, it might suffer some indigestion. Oh, yeah. I probably shouldn't go in there, given that I'm not feeling so good. That seems wise. Oh, when? yeah. When when the house remember when the house tried to kill you with the gas? <laughs> the I guess house. I do. Well, I think the tent is there to keep the gas in, so it doesn't kill people on the outside by accident. Ooh. It's released quite a lot of it then. Yeah. That would include us. Apparently it knows that uh that people are sick. Yeah, people. Yeah. We're good. Well, now it knows that gobblers can be sick too. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't feel so good. Yeah, well you had him drive her onward. The driver goes forward obediently. <laughs> it is your spell, slave. Uh, you quickly uh, clip away from Eldritch Lane and find yourself in the Temple District. The Temple District seems busy. A lot of the temples, their doors are closed. Uh, there are hundreds of people in the streets. You are seeing outward signs of the plague on some of these people. Um, and... You are seeing um, some people going about in heavy robes. Uh, it looks like a lot of chaos has happened in the streets. There are overturned carts and uh, merchant stalls that have been vandalized and trampled. Uh, you could see some people fist fighting over something. Um, there are contingents of guards that are going in groups of no less than four. They don't seem to be stopping for any of the small stuff. Um, you do see a lot of guards guarding the front gates of, uh, of temples and just a general sense of uh, of chaos in the region a um a bottle breaks against the side of your uh uh against the side of your wagon like somebody hucked a hucked a bottle uh, i have a question about our wagon mhm mm 
if I selected the wagon's surface as the area of effect for an illusion, could I keep it just on the wagon as the wagon moved? Um, there reaches a point where uh, where wagons and, and things are big enough to be targets for spells. So, mm -hmm. maybe? Oh, okay. Um, you, a four-person vehicle. How, how big is this wagon? Uh, I've got it up right here. It's called Phantom it, Carriage? Uh, Conjure Carriage. Uh, carriage can carry up to six medium or small creatures. It doesn't say precisely how big it is. Two light horses, yeah, it's probably a huge object. I would say you could, uh, although it would be very difficult to hide the wagon. Like, illusions aren't supposed to hide things. You do, oh, yeah, yeah. No, you do I, sometimes I, with stationary objects are able to, but yeah, you, you could concentrate an illusion around it if you wanted to. I will see kind of the, the run of this place, and I will say, oh, drive a hold here for a moment, I'll say, and I will uh, do a, and like, bow, like, knock on the like the roof of the the door behind me yep uh, and say all right gentlemen everybody out on the roof uh and i'll say that and then kind of whisper to the party hey, everybody just be calm for the next few moments hold on and i will do uh son are you i think son's the only one on the roof uh son and uh ferris are you guys hopping down uh, you can uh, stay where you are. You don't have to move. Just uh, be be cool, everyone. I'm gonna hover about twenty, thirty feet over the over the wagon. Okay. Uh, you you do see that there there seems to be about um, half a dozen, I would say, very young men that seem to be following your wagon. They've got makeshift weapons and another one's about to huck another bottle at your uh, 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 at your wagon. Almost like yep. they're they're angry at rich people or something. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, I will use one round of invisibility field to go invisible just for a moment. Okay. And then using the Bacombs wand so that I can cast silently, I will cast a major image encompassing the wagon and I will have the doors appear to open and it will just like clown car and out of it climbing onto the top of the carriage in the back in the front are going to be a bunch of just really poor looking sick people that are just destitute with the plague uh, and just like coughing and just like overwhelming this thing like, like you would see in overwhelmed public transport just people crammed onto this thing everywhere and they're and they're all sick with the blood veil yes i want people to not want to come anywhere near this thing because it is looking pretty bad uh, okay you, you, you... <laughs> can That's an illusion little... be of several people yeah like yeah uh his illusions yeah you, you can you can make figments uh this is what spell uh major image actually son makes a good point maybe Maybe I can't. Maybe I could just do one person? I think could you I can do? affect an area, essentially. Yeah, I want them to be kind of like a mass. They're not going to be very distinct. I mean, these people are, like, you know, within a stone's throw distance, so... Like, so, I mean, so the, cre the silent image creates an object, a creature, or a force visualized by you, and a major image... It, functions like silent image except that you can include sound thermal and smell uh so i don't think you can create a mob with this yeah um i think i will you could, have... you could create a very big and very sick looking person though <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go with some kind of big inheritor race creature that's like really really sick uh maybe he's is are there any inheritor races with like tentacles, like an inheritor race? Uh, depends on how you define a trunk. Well, I guess a trunk, something that'll just flop over. Let's go with a hippo. Let's just let's just. Okay, go with... there's this really big, sick, 
gif that is on the top of the on the top of the wagon and he's got the blood veil is that what you're doing yeah he's very sick he's like maybe vomiting up blood onto himself okay the guy with the bottle you notice they kind of stop and they're like they 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 go off to they go off into an alleyway they seem to be deterred by by this big sick guy on the roof do we know i mean we can see the guards right do we notice if any of the guards are sick um in the last group that passed by you can give me a perception check uh say again marty a perception check like the guards weren't stopping to like let you look at them but 16 16 you didn't see any outward signs of um of the blood veil. So, so from our perspective, it looks like all the people walking around are sick. A lot of them it, are. Or a lot of them are, but we're not seeing any sick guards. The guards do have um, uh, uh, like balaclavas or, yeah, but or like, like scarves. Like people are walking and coughing. And yep. is, uh, we're not seeing the guards doing any of those things. Not, not right at this spot. Is Neil breaking up for anyone? Uh, it, v, v, VC does every once in a while. Um, okay, uh, so you push forward uh, now that you've got this really sick uh, uh, gif on your on your uh, on the top of your wagon. Uh, you roll forward. You have to slow down a few times as there are crowds that seem to be around, like apothecary shops and some of the major temples. I actually have a scene uh, for the um the golden dome in the vault of commerce so i'm going to bring your tokens over uh to what this particular this funny weather king in the channel rolled his perception as well <laughs> you see nice. stuff so you enter you enter the uh the commerce square uh, we'll call it the blessed, the blessed square of commerce. Oh, nice. and uh, the big dome that you see in front of you is called the Golden Dome, which sits atop the Vault of Commerce or the Vault of Bamba Dama Damba, which is the holy temple and perhaps. Uh, um, Offices of the business branches of that particular uh, of that particular faith. You have to get off your your wagon if you're going to head towards uh, the entrance. Like you've reached a point where the crowds of sick and desperate and guards trying to keep them at bay uh, are clogging this this square. Hmm. So as we stop here, Bamba Dama Dampa is the deity for Zephyros. So he would obviously be aware of whatever ritualistic things or stuff that he has to do to be respectful and mindful as he approaches or moves around this area. Does he? Are there any of any such things? And if there are, can he just share that with the rest of the group? Sure. So everybody can be respectful. Um. So you know what your god is, and you know some of the basic tenets of, of your deity. Um, give me a second. Let me go to the gods page. So Bampa, Dama Damba, do you have knowledge of religion? I'm pretty sure I do. Check in quickly. Okay. Uh, yeah, plus 11. Nice. Yeah, so not only are you a church goer, if we wanted to use that metaphor or that, uh, that comparison, you with a plus 11 would have a chance at knowing some deeper, uh, like, tenets of the faith, uh, like someone who actually read the Bible, um, as opposed to someone who, you know, may not have read it. Give me a knowledge religion. Got it. Sorry. Hey, happy. 31. Not 20. 31. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, the God of Many Hands, uh, there are six aspects of commerce or of trade and contracts. He is a lawful deity. It is a community deity. The domains of Bampa Damadamba are community charm and protection. Uh, and there is a saying, and in fact, there's a separate book in the canon of Bampa Damadamba for each of these things. And one is the hand that greets, one is the hand that binds, one is the hand that gives, one the hand that takes, one is the hand that makes, and then there is the hidden hand. And each of these has its own like sub-spiritual text in the uh, uh, in the religion of Bampa Dhamma Damba. You know that the hand that gives has limits that Bampa Dhamma Damba and his priesthood is even in this troubled time of plague likely charging full prices and maybe even some of the assholes might be inflating the prices of uh of healing because they are in demand uh you know that money talks in this religion and you actually see as you're kind of giving the party a bit of a lecture in the back of your rich uh spell carriage um uh you actually see some household guards uh, escorting what looks like a man and a woman that are well to do and trying to like keep them keep them like protected with shields as they are pushing their way through the crowd to the front gates of the vault of commerce. There are people pelting them with shit and and with uh, with rotten vegetables and yelling at them and trying to kick the guys with shields down. But unarmed populace versus. Uh, they haven't quite like decided as a mob that they're going to take this these eight guards out and these two nobles, but they're definitely uh, booing with whatever energy they have left um, as this rich couple looks like they are being escorted into the front of the Vault of Commerce. Is there some way for Zephyros to make sure that we can gain entry? So this is a pretty wild time. I'm sure there are guards blocking entrances and so on. Uh, you could, um, you could, uh, uh, you could present your holy symbol. I'm assuming you have one, if you're a follower. Okay. Uh, you really need to present your holy symbol to a priest of Bamba Dhamma Damba and be willing, and give proof that you're willing to pay. Uh, another way would be, uh, you are an apprentice at the academy, um, or at the Archonacrum. This might give you some special status. Um, in addition, you are a Tusker, which may mean, hopefully those combination of things would allow you uh, to get in the front door. It looks like a thousand people also want in the front door though. Uh, so on a normal day, show that you're rich. On today, meh, eh, it, may, it may take some doing. Uh, any ideas, Zephros? I believe you uh, are familiar with this temple. Any back entrances? Are there any back entrances here that I'm aware of? Uh, this would be a knowledge local or a knowledge religion check. We've or flown to the windows? train from the top. We could do something similar here. Yeah, very true. Uh, There's got to be a window. Yeah, if, no. you, if you if you if you look at this whole place, this whole place is the temple. If you got over that wall and found your way inside, then you'd have to explain to the priests and guards and people inside, like how the fuck did you get in? But you know, <laughs> I rolled up this floor roll, so uh, I, I'm guessing no. twenty total. Um, you know that they not only do um, religious services here, but the vault is actually a bank vault where the rich and poor alike can invest or store money and goods. There are loading docks, there are private entrances, there are places to go in. Everyone, uh, everyone know. here seems to want to go into the main religious services areas, whereas you know that probably around the sides of this building there might be private entrances. But I also know that we want to get to a religious area because we're looking for healing. And even if we get in by a side entrance, we would have to explain something to somebody. Yep. Uh, Farisay, given your vantage point as hovering around the top of the carriage, I need you to give me a perception check. The DC is going to be 26 because the crowd is thick. 
Uh, and this person is trying their best to look inconspicuous. Yeah, I can do that. I've got pretty good perception. Uh, 31. Nice. Um, you see someone you recognize. Ah. You actually see two people that you recognize. Interesting. You see in the crowds, uh, Emrick Grubauer. Right. The he was the, the, the guard captain guy. Yeah, he was the he was the sergeant that you uh, through your actions in the uh, in the slew uh, got got promoted to lieutenant. We promoted him. You, <laughs> You do notice him, however, holding on to somebody that looks very small and very sick. Uh, he's got the, uh, and it, it looks like the, he's waiting in line like everyone else and kind of being jostled around a little bit. And um, I'm going to find a token for her. On the opposite side of the crowd, kind of like near a merchant stall that is empty and is talking to a merchant in heavy in heavy robes, like he's trying to disguise himself a little bit, but bogards tend to stick out from like regular humans. You actually see uh, yeah. you see Bukrebek off to the side and like talking to some of the uh, talking to like a merchant who's like who's like going like this like the merchants all like like freaking out because it looks like people have come and stole his produce and maybe some of his holy trinkets uh, you can see some charlatans in the crowds going this person is uh, this is the this is the blessed the blessed she can see and they're handing out and people are paying for it there's this little girl sitting up, sitting on a stool. She's dressed up in, in like this really white dress and has a veil on. And she looks like she's painting like like almost like calligraphy on pieces of paper that then people are buying as if they are wards against the disease. Like there are some charlatans that are like on the edges of this uh, on the edges of this crowd selling their their snake oils and charms uh, to people who really who are basically really suffering. Let me let me ask a quick question. See if yeah. my memory is correct on this. E Emmerich, when we met him, he was drunk, and uh, uh, was he estranged from his family at that point? Did he have like children? Uh, you don't know, but there is a child definitely wrapped in a blanket in his arms. Yeah. Ooh, trying to be a hero again. I think I'm going to fly down and, um, uh, say hello to Emric. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find a token for, uh, the girl. The reason why I'm searching is that... I ran this adventure series as the first Pathfinder campaign that I ever ran, and I think I still have like all the tokens from 2000, let me just see, properties, oh, because I copied it, it's now, uh, like 2008, 9, when we ran it. No, I don't have her token. Oh, yeah, I do. I, I just saw it. Uh, did I rename her? All right. Okay, you fly down, and people gasp a little bit when, you know, uh, a fae spreads her wings and kind of flies into the crowd. They step back from you, and uh, Emmerich apparently is to like concentrating on trying to get like stay in line sort of thing but the the little girl and where and the way she uh he's holding her um smiles meekly at you you can see that she's got a few bloody tears running down her face and maybe a couple of like uh, bumps along her neck uh showing that she is uh she's she's anemic as well like really uh really pale uh, and yeah. em and Emmerich just has her wrapped in a blanket. She smiles weakly at you, like you're a uh, an interesting looking fey creature. Hello, Emmerich. Is huh? this your daughter? Oh, uh, Pharisee. 
we have returned uh, and need some healing of our own. Oh yeah, the blood veils everywhere. Yeah, uh, no, this is not my daughter. This is my niece, uh, my sister's daughter, Brienne. This is a uh, uh, Ferrisse, the, the um, the 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 Fae I told you about in the slough. <gasps> you're the you're the Fae singer. I'll stay back a little bit. Yep. Yes. It's it's good to see you. Uh, you are healthy yourself, Henrik. Uh, I have not. Uh, he. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, high is good for him. Yeah. I. It's not great. I don't feel sick, is what he says defensively. <laughs> hmm. We will put in a good word for you. I promise you are one of our friends. The... Um. Would it be possible for me to like jump down to him or would I need to like dig through a crowd to do that? Uh you do have to mingle through a bit of a crowd to get there. Fuck I'm not. Okay, you're, you're like you're like, nope, I'm staying on the wagon. <laughs> you do see some people approaching the wagon and begging for alms. Uh, I'll and make if the... we find treatment we'll return to you. I'll make the hip I'm going to fly away. Okay. <laughs> Uh, wow. You do notice some people kind of like walking over to Emric, like, "Oh, can she help me too?" You don't know, like, like there is lots of desperate people that are looking for any way yeah. to get healing. Uh, Farisay goes flying. Uh, San and the professor, you guys are on the outside of the uh, of the carriage. You were sitting on the bench. Actually, can you throw down a carriage? Uh, yeah. Let me. I got one. I'll ping it to you. Let see. Okay. I'm sitting on the roof, not on the bench. But I'm assuming I would still be visible unless the illusion hides me. Uh, I'll land back on the roof and announce that Bukrebek is in this crowd, haggling with a merchant over there. Okay. Bukrebek sold some of our goods. It was a friend of Malbet um, uh, early on. He is a priest hmm, or uh, an agent of Baba Dumba Dumba so and perhaps might help us in. So there's the there's the scarage. Actually, I've got it. Uh, phantom. I just need a phantom steed. Phantom steeds. <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, I'll so throw steampunk. I'll throw down the uh, um, unseen servant. Is the uh... <laughs> the driver is an unseen servant. Nice. There we go. There's your, there's your scarage. Uh, there are people coming over to the wagon. Please, uh, please, can you help us? As they get closer and louder, the hippo starts to cough louder and louder and spew more geysers and blood <laughs> and, into the air on itself. It's kind of like wave its air, go ah. Uh, okay, they, they they you hear somebody say, "Oh, he's got it worse than us." <laughs> and this uh, is a uh, pretty good illusion, man. And uh, the, it, it it keeps some people away, <laughs> at least for now. Yeah, well, I don't know how much longer they'll stay back, but uh, for now, uh, any ideas on how to get in? Uh, fair say you say you saw poop who in the crowd. Oh, you know who's not yes. here that I forgot is Ugwe. Yeah, Emric. Ugwe, and then he's got a bag that every once in a while starts wiggling around, and he gives a swat over his head. <laughs> well, yes, Emric is Emric is here with uh, his niece, who is quite ill, and so Emric may not be well either. Um, well, I'd like to help them if we can. Uh, they were. We can't. They're gonna die. Friends of a style. Uh, and, um, uh, Bukrebek is here. Bukrebek was a, uh, priest, perhaps? Uh, certainly an agent of Boba Dumba Dumba. Uh, and, uh, he's haggling with a merchant over there. Yeah. We know him. And, um, he was the one that sold, uh, the item we recovered back to the queen. Ah. Yeah. So, why, I mean, that fishing through this crowd is asking for an infection. Yes. Um, but, remember how we got into the train? Why don't we just get into the temple that way? 
And if, you know, if guards stop us and ask, you know, what we're doing, um, oh, we could make the work, yeah. and give them money. Um, if anybody would be, you know, accepting of bribes, it would be, you know, them, right? Very true. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, if nothing else, it misses the enormous risk that we would face. That would be just by being here. And bribe some guards at a back entrance if they'll let us in and lead us to the front. Hey, you do see Bukerbeck actually <laughs> starting to approach the wagon. He may have spotted uh, Verise in the crowd, or when she was flying above the crowd. Yes, he's coming this way. We won't have to, to even work for it. Uh, that's just, uh, I'll, I'll fly up just a little bit and motion him over. Yep. He scuttles over. Friends! Ah! Hey! Hey, what are you doing here? Wait, what race is he? Uh, he's a bogard, which is kind of like a frogman. Uh, this frogman is dressed in, like, heavy embroidered robes. Uh, you see that on top of his embroidered robes, he's wearing, like, a, a, a thin brown robe, like he's trying to blend in. And that he might even have a chain shirt underneath his heavy embroidered robes. Uh, he's carrying a morning star at his belt, a ceremonial dagger, and a holy symbol that has uh, six hands kind of like star bursting out of it. Uh, that it looks like it's somewhat he's trying to keep disguised underneath his uh, underneath his robes. But your but your but your keen eye uh, um, with your crazy spot checks on, you see his holy symbol. Do I recognize it? Yeah, it's the holy symbol of Bamba Dama Dama. Okay. Or at least one of them. Uh, it, sometimes it's just a big a big elephant head. Sometimes it's uh, a god with many hands. And this one... The way you me. said it, it made it sound like the Star of David. Yeah, this this one looks like a bunch of hands that are kind of like right. out in a, in a star. But... For a god of banking, is dangerously close to being bad from Twitch. <laughs> But, uh, okay, that's cool. Well, I mean, Son doesn't know him, and he's yeah. nice, too, because he's been... Uh, it is uh, dangerous times, is it not? What are you doing here? Trying uh. to uh, get in the temple. We need a bit of healing ourselves. Ah, the stuffy bankers that are pretending to be priests have closed the doors. Oh. All they, know they don't want anyone to come in and ruin the carpets or whatnot. Can one still get healing here? Or anywhere else for that matter? Yes, you have to be able to pay for it. Besides, I would not want to identify myself as a priest here. I would likely be torn to shreds. Yes. I've... Wondered what is going on out here. It is good to keep an eye on things. While the other priests are hiding, I decided to stick my head out and have a look. Besides, ever since I... Well... It has been some time since I have been invited into the private circles. Into the... Rich circles. I think I was rich once. And he seems lost in thought for a moment. But it is good to see you, even under these trying circumstances. Yes, perhaps we could go someplace a little more quiet and catch up. Maybe uh, you could get a little richer again, if is, you know what I mean. Is that Zephyros in there? <laughs> He's... <laughs> You, you, in, you invite him to catch up, and he's moving to go sit down inside the inside the carriage. Ha! Oh, don't mind me! I am. Hello? As if he arose! He goes to hug you, and then he stops, he shrugs instead, and he looks at he looks at, uh, at Ugwe, who's kind of slugging this, uh, this burlap sack that wiggles every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> eyes yes. eyes raise on Booker. 
the fear says to him, what brings you here? It is the center of our religion. What brings you here today during these trying times? I... Uh, I came out to see how I can help. And you have trouble getting back in? I was talking to a merchant that was robbed. Apparently, every time there is plague, people start to act crazy. Okay, so can you help us to get in? Uh, you, uh, he looks you up and down. Unless you find money, Tree, since last time I met you, you will not be able to afford the healing. Zephyrus, uh, shows... Uh, so Zephyrus has this, uh, I forget what you call it, this band of the apprentice. Yep. So, so he shows that he's wearing the band of the apprentice. He says, uh, you are aware that I am a tusker, that I am an apprentice of the academy, and that I have with me this holy symbol that says that there's the palace of my deity. <laughs> you have learned a few principles. The principles of those in the know, those that dress the right way, those that know the words, get preferential treatment. Ha 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 ha! Right, but also there are those who know great things that those inside that building do not know and would like to know. Don't worry about them. Bukrabek knows how to, how to cure disease. He, he actually... Sean leans to uh, the professor and whispers like super fucking loud, like basically almost screaming. What the fuck are they talking about? Is, uh, <laughs> is, is Luke muted? Yeah, Luke's muted. Oh, sorry, Son. Uh, I didn't catch that. I don't hear very well these days, but uh, perhaps uh, we should pull this cart around a little bit so we're not such a sitting target. Hmm. How many of you are sick? Just, just one, right? It's just Machina. Nobody else. At the moment, just one. Ah. That, that we know of. Well, you see, I've already made deals with some people today. I do not have the spells to heal. Today, however, tomorrow is another day, another opportunity. I would be willing to trade my magics and the blessings of Bampa Dama Damba to you for hmm, an introduction. An introduction to whom? Where is Malbert? Was not Malbert with you? No. Oh, he's safe for the moment. Um, he just seemed a bit stiff, so we thought we'd uh, leave him uh, uh, planted in the library. Ah, oh, give me a bluff. <laughs> there are, like, amused looks on some of your faces. Uh, he got a nat one on a sense motive. Ah. Oh. Yes. Oh, nice, because my bluff is actually pretty good. Where do I... Oh, I didn't put that onto that list. Um, let me have it here. Yeah, plus 16. 25. Marbot was always a bit stiff, wasn't he? Always with the contract this and contract that. Ha, ha, ha. So true. Ooh. Yes. Book Rebecca can keep track of things in his head. Old ways, handshake. Well, maybe not handshake these days, but gentleman's agreement. Good enough for Book Rebecca. Didn't we help Book Rebecca somewhere? About that uh, introduction, then. Ah, yes. You see, I think you've been far away, have you not? You were looking for a way to Bostera when I last saw you. Yes. Did you go? Let's say that we did. Ah. He looks over at the at the lion guy. I see you make new friend in Bostera. Yes, I'm Ugwe. Ah, yes. Well, uh, 
Give him this new plague. We don't shake paws anymore. <laughs> and he slaps Uguay on the back anyways. Uguay pulls his hand back and just kind of takes it. Does Uguay have a tail? Uh, it would be a short, stubby one, but yep. Is it out of his pants? Yeah, I think they would probably wear their tails out of their pants. How short are we talking? It's not that short. It's not that long. Damn, man. For a six foot tall cat thing? Yeah, I guess maybe about a foot and a half. Okay. So... Can I hear the conversation? Yeah, yeah. There's a little, there's a little uh, door where you guys in the front seat can hear. Uh, I know that you have not gone to visit the queen, and I do not blame you. She has been executing people for, you know, making fun of her for uh, being critic of her ways. It all started with the death of that cat lady that killed the king. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Wait a second. They blamed uh, Ezri on the death of... Yeah. Yeah. That's news to us, right? Yep. Yeah, I everyone's like... How, how did that execution go again? It, it, they dragged this... Uh, this poor um, uh, cat folk out onto the uh, uh, out onto the uh, execution square in front of the city. Though the queen made a brief speech about law and order and respect of the ancient uh, uh, of the ancient sovereignty, and then they drew and quartered her. Her head is still adorns the citadel, along with many others that have been added to them. Interesting. Her name uh, was, you, um, Ezri. You're not known as the most respectful crew in terms of authority. So, uh, uh, uh again, uh, who did you want that introduction to? Ah. Uh, with that introduction to see the queen, you will have to go through, uh, the commander. Now, commander is a reasonable woman, or so I hear. Uh, Crescinda Croft is the one you would have to bring this thing to, and then she arranged to go see the Queen. Uh, I only need to speak to her. You see, Book Rebecca has an idea. An idea, you say? Oh. Yes. yes. Yeah. Men and women of ideas. I suppose that... You will not steal idea, or maybe you help Book Rebecca if you like idea. But idea is to um, organize all the faiths of Grand Station together to help disseminate cure for people of Station. This will require some political clout that uh, Book Rebecca does not have. While other priests hide in their temples, perhaps. As one with many hands working together, ha <laughs> ha as, as Bumpa Dama Dumba has taught us, that we will get much done and we will end this disease and resume commerce. Oh my god, this module is way too on the nose. Cosmic just playing it right now. <laughs> It's called. It sounds like a fine plan to me. Seven days to the grave. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's an what? excellent noble cause. Uh, one How? lofty, lofty introduction. Uh, yes. Our, our friend is in need of uh, fairly immediate services. It is. You know what I'm saying. Uh, um, Son leans from the roof and he's like, hey. How about money instead? I, I certainly think we could arrange this this deal that you that you have to have your services on retainer, perhaps for for some time. But um, also, it would be yes. good to get some healing now. Yes, in the morrow when I recuperate my spells, when Bamba Dama Damba provides, 
and I will use my remove disease um, on your sick companion. He still hasn't quite identified who's sick. Are we going to tell him? Or do we just keep it a secret for now? What if, uh, what if you were to have uh, a pearl of power of some kind? Is that... Uh, pearl of power? Very, uh, very nice. If we had one you could use, uh, perhaps you could give us healing today. And none the wiser. To no reneging of deals. Okay, he lets you know that remove disease, I believe, is a third circle spell. Okay. We have a Pearl of Power 3. Do you oh, honestly? I knew we had one. <laughs> we, had one. we actually oh do. God, <laughs> first, first and third uh, are the ones that, that we've got. That is, that is oh, so... Uh, oh my god. Can we work I it through? I see. Yes. Yes. If you... Um, Book Rebek will become your... Uh, in short term... Gentlemen's agreement, he will become your priest if you give him access to the hollowed halls of, of political power. Ha 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 ha. Um, so, Son, you know, leans back now from the other side, and, you know, with his head upside down. Yep. It's like, do we actually know this person? Yes. Not well, but yeah, absolutely. Uguay says, I do I not. Back. I do not. <laughs> but of course no, I meant the one he wants introduction to. Oh, oh uh, well, uh, I think maybe we saw her at the train station, but uh, it's, oh, it's hard to say yeah. for sure. It, I'm sure we could find her. It would effectively be Lieutenant Grubauer's boss. Okay. She's the head of and, the and army and the guard in... Uh, in uh, station. We do have an official invitation to see the queen. So I, we have a good reason to talk to her. Can I do a knowledge local on the this this lady? Uh, Chrisinda Croft? Sure. We've uh, <laughs> been avoiding it for some time. Let's see. Not good. I don't know. Uh, they call her commander, but she also has... She is the commander of the armed forces as well as the, uh, the grand marshal of um, of the station guard. Yes, we have been putting off that meeting with the queen. We probably should get around to it. Um, are you looking to get executed? Uh, I think she wanted to thank us for something, rather than execute us. Uh, then surely the desire to thank us that we did not meet could be interpreted as an insult by a noble boy. It's true, but we could start the process of arranging a meeting without actually going. And you think a commander would be involved in that? Uh, there must be some... Bukerbeck says that one would be. And Bukerbeck was the one that got the invitation, in fact, so... Yes, I imagine she would vet anyone that uh, anything that... Uh... It's very difficult for the Queen, the Sovereigns, to interact with people. I've always seen her guards around, uh, around the Queen. Uh, is it uh, too lately? But you, you really think the Commander would personally meet us? I, I mean, I would imagine she had, she would have subordinates to do this sort of thing. Uh, subordinates, perhaps. As far as your invitation to see the Queen will get me. I actually have no desire to meet the Queen. I understand that she has others who are trying hard to solve this problem. It seems yes, we've met some of them and they were not very nice. Do we have an accord? And they weren't exactly solving the problem either. <laughs> Word okay. is they have some new kind of doctor. No, oh, new doctor. There is uh, speakings of it. Yes. Hmm. In the speakings of his research on the disease, we met one of his uh, associates or underlings on the train. I've only heard rumor. Hmm. 
And what are those rumors? Well, that there is a new type of doctor. A special doctor that will solve all of our problems. Hmm. We still have the doctor's nose cone or something, whatever you call that, right? I don't know if you took... I think no, we, you we left, left it behind. The, we left it on the doctor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where did we leave I from? think that's true. You did you did identify it that this that thing would have given you bonuses against diseases and you know that it it blocked alignments. Oh yeah. It made your alignment appear to be neutral regardless of what it was. We met a doctor. Oh it was a, it was an interesting situation. I'm curious to know if the doctor that you speak of would be as interesting. If it is, we might like to meet him or her too. Ah. Wait, wait. No, no we wouldn't. Why would we? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Again, Saul's high as shit, so he's just yeah. giving out loud. It's like, no. Commander Croft would know about the doctors. They would also know about these fancy knights. These these women in armor that have started to wander around. Book Rebecca would like to find out these things from the source as opposed to waiting for rumors and scraps of information at the temple. How about we offer you some more information? If we can get the topic back to what we can do to get some healing done today. Ah, yes. I must let you know that the spell is... will eventually work. If it does not work today, I promise you I will cast it again tomorrow and again the next. Basically, we, remove disease. Do we know if Mokronome has enough time? Uh, Mokronome right now has, and San knows the extent of this... Mokronom right now has two con damage and three charisma damage. Ooh. When charisma reaches zero, you are unconscious. When con reaches zero, you die. So he has two con damage and how, how much charisma? Three. Do we know how long that buys Um... We don't really have a choice. San knows from his previous thing that this... The Blood Veil, if you really suck at your saves, uh, eats 1d3 con and 1d3 charisma per day. Seems a reasonable bar As to what this truly does to his aberrant, weird, unique form, you don't know. Makarnam is explaining that his bellies feel bad, which are all probably you picture the compartments where he's keeping all the things for you and other mm, owners. So, can we get to talking about? healing today? Yes. Uh, I've already cast uh, uh, great healing spells. Perhaps a use of a pearl of power, as we said. Uh, ah. Yes. Yes, I could feel the power through this pearl. <laughs> we should I haven't used it today. And our friend that needs it is inside the carriage. Ah. Perhaps we could get off a bit of the crowded street while we uh, transact. Uh, yes. Take us around. You will not want that that gnarly crowd to see me casting spells, or we will soon be mocked. Yes, uh, driver. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a take around a side street or try and find someplace quiet. Maybe Bukerbeck even knows a place and we'll point it out. Yeah, he, he points it out and you end up down like some side some side street that sells uh, where a bunch of like bakery shops. They probably make things like holy wafers and, and uh, 
and other uh, other goods that the temples consume. Uh, it's rather quiet as a lot of the businesses are, are closed um, and uh, Buker, Bukerbeck uh, learns the command word, I assume, from from Ferrisay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm he, willing to share it for this. He says I'm the command word and his, and his tongue basically lashes out and grabs it and he kind of sticks it in his mouth a little bit and then he kind of like spits it back out into his hand. Uh, he casts his spell and then his, his hand glows golden. Uh, and he's looking around, like, who do I touch? I'll point at the bag Six. and say, our friend is a mimic. Ah! Oh! Oh! And he... How he, fascinating, don't you think? Yeah, he, he... He gingerly puts his hand on top of Makarnam's vague head, I guess. And uh, the golden energy flows through him. He needs to make a caster level check. And the DC is the DC of the disease. The disease that Makarnam has is 16. And uh, Bukerbeck's caster level is 5. So, um, Matt, given you, you're the one who provided the Pearl of Power, you can roll a d20 plus 5. The DC is 16. No. Okay. Okay. Oh. A big no. I don't feel good. Ah. Booker Beck looks nervous. This disease is very um, pernicious. Yes, pernicious. I will have to try again tomorrow. And he hands, he hands back the, the pearl. The pearl. Oh. That, that seems I'll... fair wipe it off carefully and, and stir it again. <laughs> it's a little bit slimy from his saliva. <laughs> with a hand sanitizer. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> like with a <laughs> <laughs> Um Until we are complete, uh, I will let you use it every day. Uh, and in fact, I might let you use it for a couple days after, too. Ah! But your little bag here, I have a spell that will help! It will not cure the disease, but it will treat... Hmm. He will treat his belly ache. Ha 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 ha. Okay, he casts a spell. It takes three rounds to cast. Um, and when he touches Makronam, he re restores 1d4 points of ability damage to his con. Uh, so give me a d4. Four. Okay, Makarnam now has no con damage. That's that's better. That's that's good. You will still feel poor, but you will be you have staved off dead for now, little baggy. Ha ha ha! Oh, thank you. The swirling is at least stopped, but I'm still feeling very leaky. Um, son. Attempts to gracefully jump off the top of the carriage. Yep. But he is high as fuck, so he just falls. Okay. Stumbling around uh, at the carriage. <laughs> uh, gets up nonchalantly and um, casts uh, Delayed Disease on Makanon. Okay. Reaching in through the door. Oh, hi, son. Hey, you've been doing that without me? And uh, uh, you cast Delay Disease, and uh, I think that delays the effects of the disease? There might be a roll involved. I think there is, actually. Let's have a, let's have a gander. Let's have a gander here. Alright, uh, target becomes temporarily immune to disease. Any disease during which you're exposed, blah, blah. If the target is currently infected with disease, you must make a caster level check against the disease's DC to suspend it for the duration of the spell, which is for one day. Uh, cool. Give me a caster level check. So this is 1d20 plus your caster level son, and your your caster level will be... Two, I think. Uh, no, it's probably a little higher than that. You're an 8th level ranger, which means I think yeah. you're a 5th level caster... Yes. So you're actually the same level caster as uh, Bukerbeck. Yeah, it's, it's ranger level minus 3, so it, yeah, it's plus 5. Eight. 
Okay, you can tell that the magic the magic uh, um, uh, flows out of your hand, but you can see that uh, it didn't quite take effect. Um, Son takes a uh, mighty token in the joint yep. to improve his chances and uh, does it again. Okay. Ah, it is a healer in our midst. If you have healer, then why do you need Bukrabek? Oh, uh, we need a good healer. I mean, um... Ha, 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 ha. And he kind of slaps the side of Son while uh, Son's like half smoking and half yeah. casting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're like, yeah, this is... Son, son is, is good, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's, Do not it's fear, good. my friend. The healing arts are mystical. But one thing that Bukrebek has learned is that persistence and faith. Indeed. But that is actually two things, but I was counting with the hidden hand. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, yeah, Son isn't really discouraged. Okay. Again, because he's high. Yep. Um, so he's like, eh, whatever. And starts climbing back up. Hopefully makes it eventually. Yeah, you climb back up and you're, you're like, oh, that's st- that thing's still going. There's still this sick hippo on the top of the on top of the top of the wagon, like puke, puking blood over the side. Just casual. Yep. The little crawling claw invisibly keeping keeping a hold of that spell. I'm, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you attempted healing on this day. Apparently, you're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. But at least Makarnam isn't in immediate danger of dying. Right. Okay. And, okay. And, okay. And, okay. and and in order to do this, we promised. I promised uh, Brukerbeck that I would provide him with some information on some of the things that we had observed on our way here. And I proceed okay. to tell him about the the doctor. I don't tell him that we killed the doctor, but I tell yep. him about the doctor that was infecting people. Oh, plus one bug, look at this little guy. Ah, you know, one of the cutest things I saw was a bunch of dogs, like, there's a there's a long clip on YouTube where it's a bunch of dogs, like, trying to howl like wolves, and mm. when pugs try to howl like wolves, it is, like, the, it is, like, the cutest heart huh? melt ever. Like, they can't quite make the noise, but they're, like, tilting their heads back because... Yeah. Dogs are like wolves. Well, they have the instinct. Yeah, yeah. they have the instinct, right? They, they, they hear a like, siren or something like that, it's like... And it's just not making any noise. It's, it's the other cute. hilarious thing is when he yawns, uh, it sounds like meowing, like a like a cat. Yeah. Um, just you know, he's basically. <laughs> so so he's like he's like a wolf, but in this ridiculously cute form. <laughs> I I would like to uh, fly back over to uh, Emric. Okay. And uh, with a piece of paper and a pencil. A uh, piece of paper and 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 uh, uh, quill, ink. a quill. Um, yeah, you can see and... Emric has 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 jostled his way to the front, and it looks like there's a surge of people when when that that noble and his uh, and his uh, wife, okay. fi- that noble couple, finally get to the front doors. Like the doors open a crack, and the guards are all pushing people back, and some gold some gold plated looking guards come out with these massive tower shields, and they're pushing people back while the noble couple go inside, and like the whole crowd is surging. And you can see you can see Emmerich in and his uh, niece kind of caught up in the crowd. You can fly above them, but uh, I'm going to fly above them. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to wait for for this to abate. Okay. Uh, if if Emmerich's not sick, him pressed up against the sea of humanity and oh, is he's a hundred percent going to get sick off this. Yeah. Um, I just want him to write down where he's staying. Uh, so that maybe we can bring Booker back by at some point in here. Okay. What do you... You want me to write down? Uh... Write where you're staying, and I'll, I'll, I'll just set it down. Or uh, maybe uh, say where you're staying. Put it, put it into his hand. Okay. Um, well, if he says it, then everybody who's around him might try to go there, too, to get the help. Well, we wouldn't be able to have this dialogue anyway. Yeah, yeah. He, he he writes down uh, sister's place, and he hastily writes down an address, uh, and then underneath he kind of he hastily types slew and underlines that. I'll grab it and uh, and fly back off. Okay, uh, I need a 
a slew street name. Oh, uh, well, let's see. We, we had a, a few. Uh, let's let's go to the map of Grand Station, and I'll I'll point out where the address is. Call it Fifth Avenue. <laughs> No, it's it's. Uh, apparently, her sister doesn't live in a really nice place. You've got knowledge local, right, Matt? Uh, yeah. Can you give me a knowledge local uh, station? Uh, yeah, you bet. Twenty-five. She lives on the edge between Gray District and Leatherton. On yes. Sixth Street. And what's the street called? Cistern Street. I'm trying to think of sewer components and also Street Boulevard Lane Avenue. Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll say that there's a street that divides the two places, which is Cistern Street, and we'll call it. Um, she lives on. Um, Log Way. Uh, I'll be right back. On the third house. Brown Trout Boulevard? Uh, no, she lives on Two Cistern Way. <laughs> Number two, huh? <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Slough is a very colorful place. Yeah, number two Cistern Way. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a shitty house. Uh yeah. It it kind of it's kind of on the edge of the Gray District in Leatherton, and then it's right above like this boggy area. All right, good to know. Uh, hey, I'll do what I can. You know, we're we're gonna move it slightly. We're gonna move it because I want it near the bog, so it's gonna be uh, actually in Leatherton, kind of near this bog. Yeah. The people in the area are looking up stunned, seeing how is the street just moving? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Magic, dude. All right. Uh, I'm going to fly back to the to the group then. Okay. This place is a mess. <laughs> yes, indeed. At least Mokonom is stable for the time being. Oh yeah, it's just leaky, not not swirly. <laughs> yes, perhaps when we rest for the evening, we can see about getting some of that out from inside you for the time being. I don't think that's a good idea. No, no, okay. no. Perhaps we wait. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want him to be fully purged of this. Oh, you don't want Makronam to purge. Oh, yeah. did um, what did I miss? Uh, you, she got the address to where uh, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Emmerich, uh, sister lives. Did yeah. Son see the paper in her hands, or was it like shoved into a bark? Slot? Sure, you saw her stuffing it into her, into her belt or pouch or something like that as she was um, coming back. Son makes a comment like, "Hey." Probably shouldn't like hand things to infected people. It's pressed by contact. Hmm. I suppose so. Oh no! You're gonna get six, says <laughs> Pixel. <laughs> well, she may already be. We'll burn it. We all may be sick if we don't get off this damned street before too long. Oh, I hope I haven't made anyone else sick. Uh, Bukabek, where shall we find you tomorrow? I believe we have other business to attend to today in the city. Ha ha ha! Bukabek likes business! Yeah. 
Care to tag along, then? I will come with you in your fabulous carriage. No. I have seen all I need to of the front gates of the Great Golden Dome. Yes, well, shall we? Uh, son, I believe your uh, family's uh, temple was nearby. It is far away. It's not in Grand Station. Um, no, it is. I mean, we we would need to leave the city. There's, there's a <laughs> is is Son lying? Um, I thought he was telling the truth because I thought they lived like middle of nowhere, basically. No, no, they live in the Temple District. Are you sure that's true? Yeah. Because we we talked about that they would they were living like in a secluded area. Oh, um. Like, I think last time I asked you to point it out, you pointed to, like, one of the forest hexes near Villa Malavella. No, no, Villa Malavella is where the party lives. No, I know that, but that's oh, what I'm saying. Uh, one of the hexes there. Yeah, you're... So, if we go to the map... Grand Station. Uh, on the other side of the city is where you'll find... Um, the fighting school. So uh, the Orazini Fighting Academy was on this side. And then where would the Temple of. Uh, I think it is in the Temple District. I think we were talking back and forth of like where you guys would where you guys wanted to go. Yes, and that that's why I'm feeling so strongly about it because I think the conversation was that the temple to treat Makronom, the Bampadamadamba temple, is in Temple District. Got it. But Son didn't grow up in a temple; it was a sect, which was basically like a community. It wasn't okay. That's fine. Really that's fine. We can have it up here. So, uh, what is the name of your commune? I don't know. I don't think they ever picked. Um, um, let's pick, let's come up right now. Um, Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, how about the? Um, come on, man. It's it's awesome. Uh, The Halls of Somnolence. It's not like halls. Though. It's like a hippie commune. Yep. It, it's okay. it's it's a bit. It's a big like. It, yeah. Good enough. Or something. The the Halls of Somnolence. Uh, yeah, it, it is a commune, but it is basically locked away from the world. Yeah. I, well, that's yeah. that's what I was saying. Like this couldn't be in the district. Like, yep. That's fine. It's it's on um, the other side of town. Yeah, it's a bit on the way home, too. We could swing by and <clears throat> have a chat. Shall we? I'll say as I think the carriage starts moving. Um, are we going to my place? Didn't you want to stop in? I, I thought we had some other business to attend to today. I know, uh, Ugwe, you also uh, have your... Well, that, that's on the way, yes. Um... If you're going to the Citadel, I would not mind stopping by there. Well, what this... is on the way as well? I don't know that one just uh, goes to the Citadel. I think you sure they mix. do. Sword Saints and other bounty hunters go into the Citadel all the time, is what he says. We also have an introduction, so that seems like a reason. Perhaps we could take care of this uh, Bukerbeck uh, deal. Around ah, the same time. Yes, yes, you have reason to be there. Great sword saint, why did you not say? You did not ask. Ah. Sword saint in his quarry. It is good thing. We have reason to go there. Dangerous that thing in the bag must be. Ha ha ha. Quite so. If you do not want to do your business at the same time, 
simply wait, and I will split the bounty as promised. Yeah, I mean, we can uh, uh, maybe schedule an audience visit. I doubt they'll just rush us in to see the queen, uh, but maybe. Uh... I don't think we want to necessarily to see the queen, but uh, 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 if we can see the person that might gate entrance to the queen and get on the schedule uh, and have a conversation with Kukrebeck, that might be worth doing. We also want to rescue Ludo! Says, says Pixel. Yes. She's like, I miss Ludo. Don't we all? Yes. Rescue him. Indeed. What's wrong with him? Why wouldn't he come back? And he's got the, he's got the you know what? I do. Yeah, we, uh, need, we need to... I we... think that's, that's kind of on the way to the halls of Somnolence. So perhaps... The Citadel, and then the Fighting Academy, and then the Halls. It sounds like a capital idea. Okay, so you're going, to, you're going to, yeah, you are in the capital. Uh, you're going to navigate your way to the Citadel. I'm going to roll a random encounter for random street encounter. Oh, you're 1% away from it. No random street encounter. You manage to travel through the Temple District, uh, through the quiet uh, and rich areas of Eldritch Lane. You do see that some people even have the influence that they've got roadblocks in these rich areas not only are there compounds guarded but the entire road like they're just not allowing through traffic uh you end up into this uh, uh passing in front of the citadel and remember the citadel had a, a very large square with a um uh with an obelisk in the center of it uh like like an old uh uh an old um Ankwani style obelisk uh, yes. You pass by Grand Station, which has a big clock tower, and the Citadel is on a perch overlooking uh, the area where the um, the main um, merchant square is. It looks like a disaster happened here. All sorts of turned over carts, and like it's like a flea market has been pushed off to the side. There are some burnt out. There are some burnt out tents. Uh, you see dangling from the citadel walls or on spikes, no less than half a dozen heads that are rotting in the uh, in the nice uh, late summer sun. Um, and the lifts look like they have a heavy contingent of guards at them. The lifts that go down into uh, the slough area. I have a map that shows the look of the citadel. I finally was able to dig that up. So let me go and reveal Ooh. what the citadel looks like. From a... Surrounded by the omens of winter, but perhaps nature will reclaim this place soon. I'm going to make the map a player visible. Nice, nice Swedish accent. And to go to grab the the whole party and put them on the map. I used this voice while I was programming on stream the adventure bot. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> and we have a bug! <laughs> uh, yeah, going nuts. <laughs> uh, uh, just going a little nuts. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the charisma damage, but the, like, the end. <laughs> hey man, I was still fish. able to code. I'm, I was so pleased with myself that I was able to like whip out the JavaScript and I made it super simple where all the tables were basically text files. And I was able to import them into the bot, and and it works. All tables basically are text files. Yeah, yeah, that's effectively what what we used. Um, I don't just mean in JavaScript. I mean period. A table basically is a text file. Mm -hmm. like pretty much any table, right? Or any well, anyway, um, uh, what was that? What were I talking about? Oh yeah, um, yo, next time, um, anyone infected rolls. That I well next time Mokronom uh, has to roll a fortitude save. Um, let me know. Yep, it'll be next morning that everyone rolls saves, okay. including those who have been fe infected this day, um, <laughs> or potentially infected. Okay, uh, this is the citadel that over that perches and overlooks um, uh, the square. It is a massive fortification at the center of Grand Station. 
while the queen doesn't live here, she would come down, or the sovereign, uh, the sovereignty would come down and uh, perhaps do day to day business. This is uh, basically the office and fortification of the Grand Station Guard, as well as other, uh, several other military minded type organizations. Uh, it does have a dungeon, as in like prisoners can be kept here. It is where bounty hunters bring their uh, bring their quarry. Um, if they cannot meet a marshal in one of the outlying uh, in the, in one of the outlying towns, uh, this place is heavily guarded, and you can see off of the the speaker's tower. We'll just start naming things because uh, which is um, where like some news and town criers can cry out. You do see dangling around this tower uh, six heads, and one of them looks like. Um, uh, one of them looks like it, it's kind of on a spike. Uh, uh, looks like a dark furred cat folk female's head rotting in the sun. There are birds pecking at some of the heads, and it looks like the queen is taking to adorning uh, the speaker's tower, which is where news and traditionally news and word from the monarchs comes from to bless the uh, to bless and inform the citizenry well it looks like they it is now uh, a particularly edgy message coming from the uh, from the side